Introduction to Neural Networks with C-Sharp, Class 13, Part 1. Hello, my name is Jeff Heaton. Welcome to Class Session 13 for Introduction to Neural Networks. In this class session, we're going to look at an optical character recognition program that makes use of the self-organizing map that we learned about in the previous class session. We are going to implement a application that allows you to enter as many characters as you like and it will train on these characters and attempt to be able to recognize them at the end of the training. You can then draw additional characters and see how well the neural network actually recognizes those. During this class session we will see how this application was implemented and we will see how to actually make use of it. We will begin by examining how the self-organizing map OCR application is actually used. We're now going to look at the OCR application. When it starts up it is initially untrained. It knows no letters whatsoever. That will be the first thing that we do is we will train it in this example just for two characters. However, you could train it for all 26 letters of the Latin alphabet or you could train it for another alphabet from a foreign language. We will also be able to downsample. Downsample is the process where the drawn character is converted to a lower resolution image and also the character is positioned in such a way so that it doesn't matter where you draw the character on the tablet or how big you draw the character. The position and the size of the character are both neutralized during the downsampling process. This lessens the load on the neural network of what it needs to do. Now let's look at the actual OCR application. And here you see the OCR application. This is actually the Java version of the OCR application. The C-sharp looks very similar to this. They're both nearly identical. What we're going to do first is begin to draw a letter. We're going to draw the letter X. Here you see the letter being drawn in that area. We're going to add X and it's going to show up over on the left and you can see that it's prompting us for what letter we actually drew. So we're typing X. So now it knows the letter X and you can see the downsampled version of the X there. We're also going to teach it how to recognize an O and we're doing the same process. We type O to tell it that it can recognize O. Now it knows X and it knows O. We can train the neural network. We click begin training and the neural network has now trained. It can recognize two letters. Now let's try it out. Let's draw a letter. We need to draw one of the two letters that we just trained it with. We're going to draw an X. Click recognize and it will tell you what it thinks you drew it tells you it thinks you drew an X. Neuron 0 fired. Neuron 0 is the one that handles the, the X group. Now we're drawing an O and we're going to click recognize. Neuron 1 fired and it recognized it as an O. So we've demonstrated that the neural network can handle these two characters that we've given it. There's other options for this application. You can load and save character training sets. If you've just spent a lot of time entering 26 letters, you will likely want to save that training set so that you can load it and possibly modify it later or train the neural network for it later. This allows you to keep data from run to run of this program. This is a pretty simple OCR application. It's really written kind of in the idea of say the Palm Pilot where you draw letter by letter by letter and it recognizes what you draw. This would not be suitable for OCR text from a, from a typewritten page. There's other things you'd want to add like upper or lower case. Upper or lower case is more than just training it for double the number of letters like you had trained it here. For example, how do you tell the difference between a capital O and a lower case O especially if the O is all by itself. You've got to look at the context around it to determine if the O is upper or lowercase, or even if it's a digit, a zero. Digits can also be added, but this also introduces problems with the letter O and zero. You can also train this for other languages. There's nothing inherent in this program that ties it to the Latin base character set like I used here. This concludes part one. 
In the next part, you're going to see how downsampling works. We will implement the downsampling routine that is used by this application. We hope you will continue with part two. Thank you. This course is based on our Introduction to Neural Network Programming books for Java and also Introduction to Neural Networks for C Sharp. Available in both paperback and ebook format.